One of the best questions a person can ask is why? Why should we change? Your team should be the first ones to ask this question and you need to answer it. It is a big question. It's an elephant sized question. And when you answer it properly, you can start motivating the elephant. That's when momentum gets onto your side. On the other hand, if you don't answer this question well and you don't motivate that elephant, then change is heavy, clumsy, hard to move. So it's not enough that your team knows that the future can change and what needs to change. They need to know why and they believe that it should change. So the elephant is the heart of the why. And once the heart of your team is moved, you can begin to move the heart of others. So here we are, the first step in addressing the why question and moving the elephant is you gotta find the feelings. You gotta move people's emotions toward the change. Now remember, in the heart of changed as explained in, in the book switch, they wrote that the most effective change process is the see, feel change. We can't simply think our way into new behavior. We have to lead people to the feelings. So how do you do that? Well, you could find some short, simple, but moving stories that reflect the benefits and purpose of the change. And illustrate why things need to change. Help open people's eyes to the current situation. Create what if situations. What if we don't? And what if we could? So build a sense of urgency with it and the belief that change actually is not optional. You, you really do need to change. So you find the feelings. And the second thing you can do is shrink the change. In other words, make the, the change less threatening. Break up the change into manageable parts and celebrate each accomplishment. Well, how can you do that? Well, you can help people see that they've actually already begun to change and the finish line is actually closer than they thought. And find more steps that are smaller. Break the purpose and the process into smaller pieces. It may take some more time, but the important thing is you want to keep the momentum going. You want to keep them moving and be able to celebrate that movement. Even the small little ones, just shrink the change so that they can see, oh, it, this is possible. And then the third thing, is grow your people. Most people don't wanna be known as change resistors. And many people will even endure hardship if they believe that it's an neat, important thing and that it will produce growth in the end. So here's some ways you can do that. You can create a sense of identity. You can highlight their group identity. Like for example, I am Canadian mm. and that's why we're doing this. Or you can cultivate a growth mindset. You know, we can do this. You know, we can do this better. We, we've got it in us. Let's do it, team. You're more like a coach than a scorekeeper here. You're just, you know, encouraging them, rallying the troops to go forward. You can reward people for growth. We can show them what's in it for them. You provide affirmation, recognition, maybe benefits, awards. These are some different ways that you can help motivate this elephant. Because friends, until the elephant gets moving, it likely won't bring any change. So we got to move the elephant. And in the curriculum, there are some worksheets that can help you think through this process in the change that you're thinking about. Then we move on to how we make the change. When we look at how the change can happen, the first barrier we think of is people, people's opinion. How are we going to convince them to change? However, focusing on people's behavior and what it will take to change it may not be the best strategy. The Heath brothers say that they ask the question, what if we paid more attention to the situation and let it carry most of the weight? We may find that simply creating a downhill slope and giving them a push will do the hard work for us. And I, I just like that picture. <clears throat> what looks like a people or a character problem may actually be a situation problem. So changing things and routines may be the best way to change people. 
And this is called shaping the path. One of the keys to paving a clear road to change and shaping the path is looking for ways to tweak the environment. Become adept at looking at the surroundings and strategizing how you could be, how they could be adjusted in order to assist making the change possible. How do you do that? Well, here are some simple suggestions. Put up signs that celebrate and promote the mindset you are going for. Different organizations will use posters or <clears throat> banners, postcards, emails, anything to celebrate the change they are going for. Here is what we're shooting for. And here are some steps that will take us that direction. Another thing is remove friction or distraction from the trail. Make the right behaviors a little easier and the wrong behaviors a little harder. Construct the surroundings that reflect the change you want. Another key to all this is building habits. Behavioral habits are like autopilot for the rider. They take very little energy, but they're powerful. So how can you build a habit? Well, one of the ways is to preload your routine into your mind. You decide the day, the time, the events that you are going to shape this path and take action towards the change that you're looking for. So let's look at an example. One change is you want a healthier body. Now you know that one of the steps towards a healthier body is going to the gym. So you preload this routine into your mind that when you're done work, you're going to go to the gym and you're going to do that five days out of the week. That's preloaded. So the end of the workday comes around, you're going to the gym. It's a habit of yours. You do that over and over again you're going to reach your change. You're going to reach that healthier body that you're after. And it comes because you preloaded some habits into your daily routine. Closely related to building habits is rallying the herd. And what this means is bringing the herd around a new normal, bringing people together and using peer pressure positive peer pressure to your advantage. Behavior is contagious. The elephant constantly looks to the herd for cues about how to behave. So here are some ways that you can rally this herd together and take advantage of it. Point out what people are doing that supports the change. Okay, so, so you wanna, you wanna show people this is happening and it's a good thing. So here's an example. You know, when you go to the coffee shop and you see um, a jar with um, some change in it, they want you to see that other people are doing this. And so it's a good thing. You should do it too. And so when you get some change, you throw it in the jar because other people are doing it. It makes people think everyone is tipping them. Here's another idea. Create negativity around a behavior that is not in line with the change. So it's kind of like, you know that negative vibe that happens when someone's phone rings during a public meeting and everyone turns around to look at them, like the, the vibe is tense and negative. Everyone then grabs their phone and turns it off because they don't want that happening to them. That's kind of this idea. So friends, um, completing the switch plan will be part of your assignment. So you can be checking that in uh, your resource list there in the tab there. And uh, now in the next video, we're going to talk about processing ideas together. This is a really good tool. You'll enjoy this one. Mm -hmm.